What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, today we're here for a new Madden 23 rebuild, and as requested by you guys, we're going to take a look here at the Vegas Raiders, who uh, had a nice draft, but also are going to have a very difficult time as a fan base getting hyped for the season with a brand new quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. So as I made this roster up, I looked at Jimmy Garoppolo's contract, and essentially they have an out after the first season, and you can't really replicate that in Madden. But that's just what I did. I gave him basically a one-year deal. I'm going to act already right now. I'm telling you right now. I'm triggering that buyout, that declining player option, whatever you want to do it, where he just falls to free agency, and we only essentially have him on a one-year deal. I don't know, man. You know me. We've done Raider franchises, main channel fan. I like the Raiders. They've always been a team. Like, I appreciate their history. Back in the day, growing up as a kid in Madden, they were always the worst team. They were always a team that I rebuilt before I was a content creator because they were always, you know, just... Have some fun, Terrell Pryor, Darren McFadden, um, you know, and other guys like that. Um, so I, I kind of like, I've always wanted the Raiders to do well. Even, you know, they moved to Vegas. I didn't sour on them. I was like, all right, do well. I just think it's tough, man. You go from Derek Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo and you're like, I don't know. I think they got a head coach problem, if you ask me. But we're going to try and have some fun here. We're going to try to make them into contenders. I, You know, we know that they have a good Madden playbook for sure, as long as you get the right guy under center. And, and you know, maybe it will be Jimmy G. Maybe Jimmy G goes off for 40 touchdowns this year, gets a dev trade, and we see what happens. But looking at the rest of the roster, uh, we have added in the 2023 draft class. And I'll say this, we use uh, Bengals draft class here on Xbox. Uh, a lot of the guys they drafted had dev trades in his class. So we're, we're very happy for that. We got Josh Jacobs, who's one of the most underrated running backs in the league. He is a 99 X Factor. Devontae Adams, who's one of the best wide receivers in the league. He is a 98 X Factor. We got Renfro. They signed Jacoby Myers over from the Patriots. And they got Trey Tucker out of Cincinnati. He pulls a 72 hidden dev trait. And he's going to bring a lot of speed here to this wide receiver room, which is nice to have. Both the uh, Cincinnati wide receivers were pretty, pretty much the same type of player. But they're going to be nice to the next level. Offensive line, we have Colton Miller, Muti, James, Parham, and Munford. Definitely need a right tackle of the future. So it's going to be something that we got to take pride in here is trying to solidify this offensive line and make life easier on our quarterback and Josh Jacobs. Tight end room, well, they traded away Darren Waller to the Giants, which obviously I say it's going to be hard for me to appear to have an unbiased opinion. But like I, it's, it's, I have the same approach to Darren Waller as I do Odell Beckham Jr., I think, like, you're living on a guy that just can't stay healthy and or is coming off an injury, and, like, you're expecting him to, like, stay healthy and be more productive now that he's got older. Like, have you ever watched football in your life? One in ten players play better as they get older. More often than not, they regress. So I think from a Raiders perspective, you know, it probably was time to move on from Darren Waller, get value when you could and now knowing in hindsight that they went on and got Michael Mayer in the second round, which was outstanding value. There's an argument to be made that he's the best tight end in the class. And if at least you're going to be the Patriot way of Josh McDaniels, and, and you're thinking about that, Michael Mayer, you just imagine, you know, Michael Mayer on those old Patriot teams with, like, Gronk. Remember, imagine they moved off from Hernandez and just, like, there was a Michael Mayer they could pair with Gronk. Like, they would have won probably more Super Bowls. So that I'm kind of excited about. I think he's going to be a nice focal point for this rebuild. Uh, on the defensive side... Definitely a work in progress on the defense. We got Tyree Wilson, who they selected in the first round at a Texas Tech. I was a little bit lower on him than maybe consensus, but still obviously a lot of desirable traits at six foot six, 275, 87 speed, 88 acceleration, 86 strength, an outstanding athlete, an outstanding profile if they can go on and develop him into something special, which hopefully we will be able to do here. Um, we could actually put him down on the line. Like, I don't know how they're actually going to use him in real life, but because we still have Chandler Jones on the team, Kind of want to maximize just our best possible lineup. So we'll have him be a slightly undersized defensive end here in this front. But we definitely need a new nose tackle. Um, linebacking core, Diablo did get a dev trait when I simmed the first season to kind of get us caught up to this point. So I said, ah, screw it, we'll keep it. Uh, really exciting player. Uh, Max Crosby obviously is a superstar of this defense. Secondary, though, I don't know what they're doing. I like Amik Robertson when he's coming to Louisiana Tech. So, like, he's going to have an opportunity to start. Nate Hobbs is pretty good from like a rebuild standpoint only 24 years old 81 with a star dev so i'm expecting he's going to be like a, a key piece here for all five years of this rebuild he's going to be uh, one of the one of the faces in the secondary morig at safety also going to dev trade scenario uh while i was saving he's up to a superstar and i was like our secondary is so bad i'm gonna let him keep it right i'm why not uh we got epps coming over for the philadelphia eagles who's 
you know, kind of solid. Like, I have a buddy that's a Raiders fan that asked me. It's like, all right, think of what Jonathan Abram bought. Like, obviously, there was a little bit of good. Jonathan Abram experiment didn't really work out. But, like, what he did well, like, he could occasionally just blow someone up, make a big-time tone-setting play. You get, like, a little bit more reliability, but he's kind of just like a Jonathan Abram style. They got Smith, the safety Christopher Smith from Georgia. And he was a hidden dev trait in this draft class. So he's going to be our nickel. We're going to find a way to get him on the field. We don't really have that third corner. So uh, he'll get his reps this season. And we'll see kind of where that goes. But ultimately, you know, this was a team that when I saw a lot of people suggesting it, obviously we have to figure out the quarterback room. There are some murmurs about Devontae Adams being potentially unhappy in Vegas. I have no plans right now of trading him. But if we have to decide to blow things up here, uh, he could be a potential trade target to trade away. But this is a roster that has some interesting pieces but also needs, you know, a year or two, maybe even three years of good drafting, good free agency to put them in a position to win. And that is what rebuilding a team is all about. So without further ado, let's get into your one on this five-year realistic Las Vegas Raider rebuild. Here I am roasting Jimmy G. Week one, we go and win 37-14 with Jimmy Garoppolo getting player of the week with four touchdowns, almost 400 yards passing. He's going to make me look like an idiot by the end of the season, isn't he? So we're just about the midway point of year number one. We're seven and five, pretty competitive. Um, I will say, I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo has necessarily maintained the pace that he set week one, but we are seeing good things. Like look at that, Max Crosby, 15 sacks, 17 TFLs, midway point. I've seen a couple player of the weeks for Josh Jacobs, even though he's not up there in the uh, the uh, the top three rushing leaders, leading tacklers, Diablo at linebacker. So like, you know, we're not 11 and 1 like the Chargers, but like we're right in the playoff hunt and we're ahead of the Chiefs. So that's very much ahead of schedule right now. Let's look at some contracts. What are we dealing with? $89 million. I think we're going to let a lot of these guys go. Uh, I'm literally not seeing any person that's uh, worth re signing at this point. Now, if like uh, Meek Robertson, who's playing for us right now a lot, starting, goes up dev trait because I like him, I, I might throw him a couple year deal. Same could be said for Jimmy G. Honestly, but all said with Jimmy G, if he finishes with like 40-some touchdowns, I might just at least, like, he's only looking for a one-year contract, bring him in, and then maybe draft a quarterback and kind of go that approach. But looking at the big picture right now, I think we're pretty solid. Then if you're one, end up finishing ahead of the Chiefs, second place in the West. I knew, you know, I know we've seen it not too long ago, especially before the draft, we did a Raiders video. Like, the Raiders offense does do fairly well in the sim. Usually, Josh Jacobs is absolutely incredible. So, I was, you know, optimistic there was a chance that we were going to hit the ground running here. And look at what we got. Jimmy G was honestly not that good. 31 to 19, having like a little Jameis Winston type season. So, I'm kind of only glad that's only one year. But Josh Jacobs is incredible. 1,600 yards. 20 touchdowns, average almost 100 a game. Devontae Adams got his, 1,400 yards. 1,000 for the rookie, Michael Mayer, seven touchdowns. Oh, and he's just a superstar dev. Let's go. Jacoby Myers, eight and seven. Renfro, seven and six. Really, Renfro's the only guy that kind of disappointing numbers, all things considered. He was our, is this the only system that like a slot wide receiver doesn't eat? Huh, interesting. Defensively, Divine Diablo led the league in tackles. Also had five picks, a superstar in the making 17 and a half sacks 22 tfls max crosby 15 sacks 19 tfls for the rookie tyree wilson eight sacks for taylor jones love seeing all those numbers i mean I'm, this is impressive though i'm gonna be honest with you, this is very impressive jay Hurts wins the mvp and then looking at the afc josh jacobs is the offensive player of the year. he's already an x factor he's already 99 not like we're, there's really a lot of room to grow there max crosby runner up but he's also an x factor so i'm, I'm just happy he's there diablo at number four i'm expecting a dev trade scenario there right now he's sitting on a star dev look at that tyree wilson six number six the rookie in defensive player of the year that is rare very very rare he's on a star dev i hope not for much longer the rest of the awards, Josh Jacobs, running back of the year. Max Crosby, linebacker of the year. Outstanding start. Even if we're one and down the playoffs, this is a truly outstanding start. In the first round of the playoffs, we are taking on the 12-5 and five Ravens, who, they, I mean, they should win. We're, we're very much ahead of schedule here. We're only an 82 overall. They're 87. They should be able to handle us, but we know when we're usually on the other side, these are the games you're the most worried about. And that's exactly why, as we win 30 to 28, if I had to give something to Jimmy Garoppolo, is that he's probably a little bit higher up on the list of quarterbacks 
going into the playoffs. Like, hey, you know, you'd feel a little optimistic. He's had some success with the 49ers. Wasn't a good game. Two touchdowns to three picks. Luckily, we were able to find a way, man. I don't know. I don't know what the deciding factor was. Crosby and Wilson, I guess, got the only sacks of the game. And, I mean, wow, actually a really bad game, to be honest with you. Don't know how we won. And then we're moving on to take on the divisional rival Chargers in the divisional round here. They're at 85, still better. Like, we're just the the Dark Horse team here. Holy shit. Are we going to win again? Are we going to the Super Bowl in year one with Jimmy Garoppolo? Are we going to win the Super Bowl year one with Jimmy Garoppolo? Dude. What? The amount of rebuilds we've done where we've had super teams. Like, we just did a Steelers rebuild where I had a 96 overall team and it never felt like at any point we were going to win a Super Bowl. Here we are, year one with the Raiders with holes all over the team. Our offensive line's not the best. We don't. We have a quarterback that's literally throwing an incredible amount of interceptions. Yet, we get this. Like, it's just... Here's open Madden. Like, I should be happy right now. This is way ahead of schedule. Even though we're starting to fall a little behind. But we're way ahead of schedule. We get that Super Bowl. It's going to be... We're playing with house money. It just makes no sense. Make it make sense to me. Luckily... I mean, I'm not going to say luckily. I would, I'd rather win right now. I'd honestly rather get that dub. But at least we're going to have something to continue to chase. And it wants me to feel like, man, if we had a quarterback, maybe we would have won that Super Bowl. But to make the Super Bowl in year one as a team that was one of the lowest rated rosters, just make it make sense, man. Make it make sense. So in closing, we did fall a little bit short there in the Super Bowl, but we have $129 million of available salary cap to improve the squad. We have a new sense of optimism because we're going to have a brand new quarterback that if Jimmy Garoppolo can get this here, imagine if we actually have like a really talented quarterback. The dev traits, because of this run, are very, very nice. Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams already were our X factors, but we have Michael Mayer, who was a superstar, who off of his rookie season went up to a X factor, which is huge right there. Don't know how he got it, to be honest with you. But he got it. Like, what's he? I mean, you know, did he have a thousand yards? He did. He did actually. So, yeah, actually, that's not that surprising. But, I mean, you still look at this team, man. Like, how is this team? Maybe it's just because I, I recorded that Steelers Rebuild yesterday. And you guys are getting this, I think, a day after the fact. But it's still fresher in my mind. Like, how does this win the Super make the Super Bowl? We didn't win it. But how does this make the Super Bowl when I have countless 99 teams that they're, not, they're like in the 90s for multiple seasons and we're not sniffing it? Just, I don't know, man, you can put some respect on the Vegas playbook. It's a sleeper playbook. On the defensive side, Tyree Wilson was drafted as a star dev, the first big pick of the draft class, but, you know, went off. A very good, as good of a rookie defensive season that I've seen in a minute. So he got defensive rookie of the year up to a superstar, which is going to be really, really nice for his development as he is a high ceiling player. We also have dev traits. Moore goes from superstar to an X Factor. Divine Diablo, who led the team in tackle, led the league in tackles. Goes up from a star to a superstar. Chandler Jones is back up to an X-Factor. So, like, we're capping out here with our three X-Factors on offense and defense, which is awesome for, like, a team roster composition. Uh, and then we have Smith here as a star dev. So, like, really, really optimistic that, like, a lot of all these guys here under contract, we still have $100 million to go out, get another linebacker, get a nose tackle, finish out and fill out the corner room, fill out and build out this offensive line a little bit. We're going to be competitive. We, this is, I love it. An excellent start. Going into our first big free agency period, we had a lot of money. I wanted to spend it wisely. Tristan Wirfs is someone that's somewhat common. Get him a 50-50 chance that he hits the open market. The Bucs can't come to a long-term contract extension. And if that's the case, I'm going to be all over that. That there plug-and-play outstanding franchise. One of the best tackles you can get in Madden. And seeing the other big names that would have been available, like that's, I'll tell you right now. Nick Bosa going to the Chiefs. This is the reason why I went Wirfs. Bosa signed immediately. So we need to block him. That's why we bring in Tristan Wirfs. Like, that's kind of our, our cancel out because, like, oh, yeah, the overpowered team also just got, like, that. So we're going to need to find a way to compete with that. So that's why we get Tristan Wirfs. Outside of that, I mean, there's some other signings for sure, like Lindstrom. But, I mean, he signed that contract in real life with the Falcons. I didn't really want to bend, uh, bend reality too, too much. There's no nose tackles, unfortunately. Uh, Jordan Brooks is really the only other player I considered, but he had no interest in coming here and already had a big offer from the Detroit Lions. Um... I mean, there's some corners here as well. I just think ultimately, I, I, I kind of want to put the pressure on myself to draft well versus some of these guys. We got our we got our layup. We got our freebie. We got our guy that's just going to be an absolute hit. Now, let's go into the draft looking for a nose tackle, looking for a linebacker, 
Looking for some corners if we need to. I mean, actually, you know what? While we're here, wouldn't be bad to land one corner. Just because we need two additional ones, I think it's fair to say. So do we got any, like, sleepers down here on a start of that could be, you know, interesting developmental guys? Greedy Williams there. Yeah, not so much. A little bit up there in age. I say that as someone that is firmly 30 years old, that that is just too old. I mean, Jeff Okuda does have the superstar, kind of fits into the... Like, what if we offer a player friendly? At least, where does that put us in the race for Jeff Okuda? Quits the top... I, I mean, you could do a lot worse. Uh, we can't evaluate right now. We're going to send him to the next week. But, I mean, I'll take that. Sure. Also forgot, I, I don't have a quarterback. Lavar is signed. Hurts is signed. Zero chance Herbert doesn't get signed. Why not? At least we'll see. I'm not going to overpay. But we're also not really in a position to like draft a quarterback high we're gonna have the second lowest pick do i want to mortgage the future for a quarterback i didn't even really scout quarterbacks in this draft class so uh welcome to the tua tagovailoa who got a superstar dad welcome to the tua tagovailoa like this could happen i, I could see a scenario we're, I, I can't see a scenario where Tua earns like a superstar dev, which whatever that would have to equate to in terms of production in real life. Like if Tua gets 30-some touchdowns, he's probably going to stay there in Miami. But he doesn't have his contract. I don't even know. Did they pick up his fifth-year option yet? Like he could potentially be one of the top names that could go to a different team in free agency. Could that be the rate? Who knows? So this is going to be at least for right now, man. I did not. This is live. A lot of times I map out kind of how I want these rebuilds to go. Sometimes we let, you know, the board dictate what happens. But uh, we're calling Audible. This is going to be the Tua Raiders rebuild. It's not too often I see a guy in scouting that, like, I need to get. Because we're picking up the ass into the first round. We need it. We need a defensive line. We've got to help that front three around Tyree Wilson. And, like, there's there's some solid prospects that, that kind of fit that mold. Like, Kitchens here at 6'4", 293. A double B for what we know. We get the double A here on on Pierre Gregory. Gregory, he literally went to Clemson. Uh, he could be, you know, he could be somewhat viable. Keenan Perryman, first rounder, three Bs and an A. Probably going to be a little outside of our range. There is the gigantic nose tackle. Unfortunately, his stats suck. So like, I'm not. That's I don't think that's necessarily going to be a layup. But I also scout the linebackers. Who can be like our partner in crime? And that's actually probably not a good thing to say regarding the Raiders. Who could be our uh, <laughs> who could be our, our next big one-two punch? Probably also not a good thing to say with the uh, with the Raiders. Anyways, what I'm trying to get to is we need a we need someone that can play alongside Devon Diablo. And look what we found here. You know, not the top rated linebacker, Stanley Murray. Three A's and a B. I haven't yet to see his physicals, but it's gonna be a lot. Elites, I need this guy. This guy's gonna be absolutely incredible. We're gonna. I'm gonna trade up. You know, I probably want to trade up a lot. Like that guy's probably going late first, anyways. That he's our first pick. Absolutely. Look at the mock draft. Usually a good rule of thumb. He's going at 24 to the Panthers. We pick at 31. So we we're gonna have to look to try to move up here. I'm gonna be saying, you know, we might be maybe just to play it safe. 19, 20. So one of those range. We'll see if we could trade up. So look at what it's going to cost for pick 20, which is the Houston Texans. They want my pick this year, my second round next year, my third round pick this year, which I almost think we're overpaid at this point, but that is such a clearly, like, he needs a dev trade at this point. If he doesn't have a dev trade, that's going to be pretty bad. But this is clearly a big-time prospect at a big position to need long-term for our squad. So, you know, as long as there's a hidden dev here, I don't think I'm going to lose any sleep over it. And there shouldn't be. This guy looks like the complete package. He has the key ratings. Usually, a lot of times you get the key ratings, and their combine's not the best. Really, I mean, you would love to see the 20-yard shuttle be a little bit better, but the fact that you look at his pro day, it would have been fourth, second in the bench press, vert jump top five, three cone top five, Staley Murray, don't be normal, Dev. Fuck! Uh, let's see if we can save it here. We got Jaqueline Wallace, 6'2 at Alabama, double B, double C. Double B in the least important, double C in the most important. Combine pretty good. It's one of them drafts. All righty. Oh, after a couple more normal dev botches late, we actually get a nice looking scheme fit. Derek Curtis, 6'3", 303, hidden dev, defensive end, 3'4", scheme fit out of Louisville. Let's go. We got another one. This guy was UDFA projecting. John Bryant out of Miami, the U. Like a Denzel Perryman regen. 
So outside of a couple nice hidden dev players, which don't have the best ratings, like Curtis 65 hidden dev, Bryant 67 hidden dev, uh, wasn't my favorite draft class. Uh, Wallace, I mean, at least, you know, Murray, he's gonna have plenty of opportunities to get that dev trait. He's gonna be our, our second big time linebacker. And you know, 75 is not a bad rating whatsoever to get land in the first round. That's some really nice traits. 86 tackle, 87 speed, 91 acceleration, 83 pursuit, 78 block shed. Probably needs to work on his coverage ability just a little bit more, but it's not a brutal pick. But I think given the fact that we did trade up, we gave, what was it, a one, a three, and a future two, you, you really want to be at least getting a guy that has a star dev out the box. A few things just to kind of quickly break down here. One is, you know, we really decided not to go after a quarterback in this year's draft class. And it looks like the quarterbacks were kind of butt cheeks. All things considered. Top quarterback, Bernie Goodrich, 74. Does have the hidden dev, but you know, it, this is ultimately like, did we make the right call? Maybe paying and gambling on Tua. And Goodrich, easily top quarterback, just to start at like an average middle of the park, probably would thrive in our scheme. Second quarterback was Dennis Bryan at a UCLA, 72. Does have the hidden dev. Um, but like, I mean, ultimately not too, too worried. And I mean, we were talking about some of the defensive ends. But again, like all those guys went almost top 10. Like it would have been very expensive for us to jump up all the way to, to go get them. So I, I don't have a whole lot of regrets here in this draft. Even though it wasn't our best draft, it just kind of is what it is, man. It doesn't even really look like a particularly strong draft class when, you know, look at that. Like almost everyone's below a 75 that's going in the top five. Not a strong draft class. There may have been some of you that rolled your eyes, especially if you're a Raider fan going, he got two, uh, dude. Like what, he got a judo so he doesn't fall and hurt his head. Tua has got player of the week, week six, four touchdowns. He's got player of the week, week three, with five touchdowns. Also shout out to Max Crosby with four sacks. He's got player of the week, week two, with three touchdowns. He has been player of the week three times in six weeks. We made the right call. We are undefeated, 6-0. and oh. We have a breakout quarterback scenario, which, I mean, we're not going to hop in and play, but you might as well trigger it here live while we talk about some contracts. See if we can hit this against the Carolina Panthers. I mean, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Tua, who's looking for his fourth player of the week in seven weeks. We'll see what happens here. See if we can at least, at minimum, continue our undefeated streak. Get that 7-0. Carolina's, you know, they're one of the better sim teams as well in Madden 23. So, uh... It's not an easy one. It's not a layup. Hey, look, a shootout loss, 37-31. A chance to a got it. Outside chance. Wow, no, did not hit it. Tough loss. Two did not play up to the standard that he has been able to establish here. First L of the year. Uh, actually, while we're here, we'll set our national scouting focus. I'm thinking of my roster right now. Let's look at the strengths. Absolutely want this to line up with the defensive tackle room. We still very much are in search of uh, a defensive end, a 3-4 D end, and a nose tackle that we compare with Tyree Wilson. Still a work in progress. Again, with our team having so many holes, the fact that we were 6-1 and one just makes me shake my damn head because I can have teams full of 90s and we're not, we can only dream to be 6-1. and one. Uh, But look at that. We have $68 million. Got to decide who gets paid here and who we have to make some tight, tough decisions. I think someone like Chandler Jones, which is very affordable, very reasonable. Uh, he can't, you know, you're not going to be able to prioritize that guy right away. You got to pay other guys first. First, we got X Factor Mori at safety. Five year deal. This is a homegrown talent player that they drafted out of TCU. We have Renfro in the slot. Very reliable slot wide receiver. $28.5 million is not too bad. He only wants more years, so we're, we're fine on that number. I'll give him, you know, slot wide receivers usually age fairly gracefully. We have Nate Hobbs at corner. We'll give him a five year, $44 million. He wants more money. Guys, we're winning games here. Don't want to be a part of that. Diablo led the team in tackle. Uh, led the league. I keep saying team. He won the led the league in tackles. We'll get him to a four-year contract extension. Muti, only 25 years old. And he's almost an 80. So absolutely. I actually don't even know in real life if he's he's one of those guys. Like, I'm pretty sure solid in real life. But I also I also you know don't hold me to it. You know what? Chandler Jones, if he will take a one-year deal, even if he regresses down to a superstar, that's still gonna be a nice rotational player. That's gonna mean that we don't have to reach. Or overpay for an average edge rusher in our scheme next year. So I think we're going to come back to the table with Renfro and Hobbs. Still will likely have, especially when we get the, the, the bonus salary cap, probably $35, $40 million salary cap to get this team better this offseason.
Guys, we have, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say we've cracked the code because it's only we've only been one season in, went to the Super Bowl. But 15-2, uh, and two, number one offense, number one passing offense, number three rushing offense, number 10 defense. This team, look at Tua. Godlike numbers. 5,400 yards, 49 touchdowns, 10 picks for Tua Tagovailoa. Our free agency signing. 1,600 yards, 24 touchdowns, Josh Jacob. We are literally putting up, we are literally putting up like year five, 96, 97 overall offense numbers with like the Bucks playbook. We're just doing our thing here in Raiders. We're Raiders offense, Raiders defense. Devontae Adams just casually going for 113 catches, 1,700 yards, 19 tutties. 12 and 8 for Renfro, 1,010 for Jacoby Myers. Michael Mayer's even getting that. That's probably you want top three numbers for a tight end. I do we it's incredibly late on the Madden cycle. And we've no I know the Raiders are pretty good. Like I, you know, we've done uh, Anthony Richardson on the Raiders. He put up some pretty big numbers. But like not like this. Like just we we want you to make note of like the Raiders. Like, you know, we're gonna pay attention to Madden 24 whenever that drops. Like we're gonna first thing I'm gonna do, honestly, is, is even in the beta, get in. Sim does the Vex quarterback, regardless, have 40 some touchdowns. Is the Chiefs are the Chiefs still unbeatable? We might need to like start looking at the Raiders here a little bit. Max Crosby, 17 TFLs, 22 sacks. Like I don't nine and a half there for Wilson, which is solid. Like, but I don't think we've ever had this big of numbers. Like five picks. Like that's kind of a breakout. Like every single position group had a standout player. And it's few and far between the amount of times that has happened. Like Jeff Okuda, five picks. That's probably what, near tops of the league. 22 sacks for Max Crosby. That's probably what, near tops in the league. Devontae Adams, receptions, yards, and touchdowns. That's probably near tops of the league. Josh Jacobs, I think I saw he was a third leading rusher in terms of yards. Probably no one had more than 24 touchdowns. Let's, why are we talking? Let's look at it right now. Josh Jacobs, third most yards, the most touchdowns. Two attack of lower, the most yards, second most touchdowns, but he had one less pick, you know? I don't know. He had more yards per game. You're going to give him the edge over Joe Burrow if you're ranking quarterbacks. And I'm actually going to be very pissed off if Tua doesn't get. I'm not going to say he has to get MVP here, because uh, I will say, you know, 45 and 8 for Lamar. He probably has better rushing numbers too. But just absurd numbers across the board. We had five picks for Okuda. That would put him tied for second. We had 22 sacks. Like, just, I I don't know. I'm almost speechless from a standpoint. Like, I was not expecting this. Tua gets runner-up for the MVP. Probably should have won it. Devontae Adams, Offensive Player of the Year. Max Crosby, Defensive Player of the Year. We have, you know, I think, again, legit arguments and claims that Tua should have been quarterback of the year and Josh Jacobs should have been running back of the year. Devontae Adams, Wide Receiver of the Year. Crosby, Linebacker of the Year. Kuda, DB of the Year. Incredible, an incredible role, which I'm like, we've gassed this up enough that it's like, all right, we, you know, let's get this disappointing playoff run over with. But I don't know. We went to the Super Bowl with not this types of numbers with fucking Jimmy Garoppolo as our quarterback. But of course, we roll the one team you never want to roll. We got a breakout here, a rare breakout playoff game. It's Matthew Butler. Again, okay, that speaks to where our team is at. We got guys like. Matthew Butler, no disrespect. I'll guess right now. He went to Tennessee, I think. It's one of my weird traits. If you've been drafted like in the last 10 years, I probably know, even if you're like a bubble guy, roster bubble guy, what college you went to. I think he went to Tennessee. Was he right? I don't even care. We'll check. Someone else can check. Someone can fact check it. But yeah, of course, we have this historic year. We run into the one fucking team you never want to see. And I once again ask... The Madden developers, I know you watch some of my stuff. Don't have this again next year. Just don't. Don't have it. Don't make the Raiders this good. You know, it's a, it's a two-way street. I'm fine if you don't make my Raiders team that's still a work in progress only in year two of five this good. I'm fine with that. But also, don't make the Chiefs just unbeatable for the sake of making them unbeatable. Like, you know what I'm saying? When the Chiefs have a really strong roster, they should feel like the final boss. But when they don't have a strong roster, when they, you know, that way there, like, that was an average, average Chiefs team. But what were they, 86, 87? Like, somewhere in this race? Like, that's, that's like, a, that's a Chiefs team. 
you know, they should just win all the time. Like, if you have Patrick Mahomes and they end up building, like, a 91-92 overall squad, get some big hits and free agents. Actually, I take that back. I literally am going to walk it back because I recorded the second, like, the first couple parts of this video. Yeah, I remember they signed Nick Bosa. So, uh, actually, the Chiefs are probably a super team. So, then, you know what? I'm going to completely spin around. I know I'm rambling a little bit. I'm going to spin this around. We are now contending against a Chiefs super team. So what we established this season, while we're ahead of schedule and we still finish with the number one offense, top 10 defense, we're only going to have to get better to compete with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be my super team against their super team. And they get the better of us here in year two. We'll be back year three better than ever. Chiefs went on to win the Super Bowl. Don't care. Don't even want to highlight that. Looking at our squad, we got Tua up to an X-Factor. No dev traits down. So we got an excess of X-Factors here. We'll probably swap the X-Factor off Michael Mayer and give it to Josh Jacobs at the backfield. But, I mean, look at the landscape of this roster. I mean, we're still... We don't have a center. We could probably look at adding competition there with Parham at right guard. Even though I, I would like to try to keep some of our homegrown players. But, like, you know, we got a 68 center and a 78 right guard. And we're already putting up super team numbers. Like, we're, we're still in the process of building complete. Look at my D-line! Two-thirds of my D-line, or two, yeah, or, or not long-term piece, just kind of role players. My slot corner, kind of non-existent. Jeff Okuda goes up to X-Factor. He was like a kind of a under-the-radar, we might as well sign someone type sign. He was a superstar dev corner, but comes here, gets DB of the year, goes up to an X-Factor. Smith, Chris Smith, part of that 23, uh, 2023 draft class, was a hidden dev, star dev. He is up to superstar. He's playing the best football of his career. I mean, if we can't get an edge rusher, we buy uh, Young. The draft pick from Tennessee from that 2023 class. You know, he's at a point in time where he could take over for Chandler Jones. But also, you know, that's another spot we want to try to get better. Murray was uh, our top pick there. We traded up for him. He was normal dev, but he played a lot. He was our second leading tackler, and he went up dev. We did lose Superstar on Diablo. Is, you know, I guess you don't really want to see anyone going in the wrong direction, but this team's still so stacked. We got enough money to make a splash or two here this offseason if the right player's available. We're going to continue to crush the draft. We're winning a Super Bowl. It's only a matter of time. All right, going into free agency. I thought about bringing Jalen Waddle in, reuniting with Tua, but we don't have, like, you know, we weren't coming into this free agency. We had, like, 50 some million dollars, which is nice. We'll show some guys I'm going after, but that's, like, a move, an overkill move where you have, like, $100 million when you're playing with, like, a rookie contract on at the quarterback spot. We paid Tua legit money, so we had to be, you know, a little bit more thoughtful. Like, our wide receivers, we got, what, three? Got one over 1,000. Like, what would Jalen Waddle necessarily bring versus just being like maybe too much too overkill so we're actually gonna be aggressive here i'm gonna look at jalen phillips that is gonna be uh some competition there right outside linebacker like i wasn't he uh i don't know I don't, I don't, I don't want to overstep i feel like he was one of those um not big high school in vegas that, like dtr and those I, I feel like he went there but i i mean i could be tripping either way i'd love to bring him here to vegas and then i got james daniels who has a, a new profile pick it looks like uh, but for him, he can play guard or center. Played center, he was drafted as a center. Uh, and that's two spots we need. We need a right guard and a center. So it depends. Like, he gives us a little bit of flexibility for the draft. Depending on if we could draft a center or a guard, we can kind of put him at the other spot or vice versa. So let's see if we can land both these guys. Big time positions of need. And of course, they want to be a part of arguably the best team in the NFL right now. Now, we're in a very privileged spot where we're going into year three of this rebuild and we're, we're incredible. But I've said time and time again, when I see a guy that's like almost can't miss, I'll I'll go to extreme lengths to get him. We need a D lineman. We need someone that can play on that front three. Someone that can play on the other side of Tyree Wilson. And Quincy Slay, top five talent. I saw the three A's and a B. I said, you know what? This guy's going to be worth scouting. Look at the rest of it. Elite acceleration, elite agility, elite jumping, elite speed. Put up 38 reps on the bench press, top five at his pro day. This guy's gonna be amazing. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even guess what the rating's gonna be. 80, 80 X factor, something like that. So I, I took that, and then I was like, well, is it gonna cost me the first overall pick to go get him? Look at the last mock draft, which usually kind of falls in line. He's projected to go four. So if I want him, it's it's fair to assume I'm gonna need to try to figure out how to get that third pick from the Browns, and it's gonna likely have me sabotaging future drafts. But that's the kind of guy you sabotage future drafts for. I'm going to go try and get him. That's exactly what we had to do. I didn't even have a second round pick this year. So I traded my first this year, my second next year, my first next year to get pick number three. This guy needs to live up to the hype. Last line, last player we traded up for, the linebacker. Well, he did get a dev trade because he played a lot, was a feature player on our defense. 
We traded up for a normal depth player. I do not think that's going to be the case here. This actually looks like an awesome draft class, but we just we just couldn't sit there at like 20, whatever, the 26, 27. You know, move up to three. It's not like we're moving up to the number one overall pick. It's not like even like we're moving up to the number two overall pick. We are like at that spot where like usually the best nine quarterback goes. We were aggressive. We got him. Quincy Slay. 6'2", 292, 85 acceleration, 80 speed, 92 strength out of Georgia. Welcome to the Raiders. And let's grab a true nose tackle. Charles Singleton, 339 pounds. Usually these players tend to be pretty well. We scouted him. Maybe not amazing. Second, third round talent, which is a little bit good, solid value right now. 40 reps on the bench press. Probably, you know, I'm expecting a guy that's probably going to be like mid-70s. All right, looking at our draft class. Now, unfortunately, the one position I couldn't get, I wanted a center, like an interior lineman that just did not exist. But the fact that we live this draft, we get a 72 nose tackle fine by Quincy Slay, 83. We're going to move next to the defensive end. I actually wonder if that, that will shift his rating up too, too much. Up or down. Let's see. We'll make him uh, a left defensive end. He's left hand. Let's go on that strong side. Stays as an 83. But this guy's as good of a defensive lineman as I have seen in a draft. In an incredible skill set. Ready to hit the ground. Already a top 10 player at his position. That is why you sabotage a future draft. Because this guy here is going to be a true game changer. And again, it's an arms race. It's us versus the Chiefs. Who's going to be the true dominant super team in the AFC? They... Introduce that competition. I was here just to have a nice little slow burn, cooking ribs at 225 degrees for nine hour type rebuild here and get there eventually. Then you have over there the Chiefs just going on nuclear mode. I got to match that. That is how you match it by finding players like this and going and getting them. And take a little sneak peek here. Kind of goes without saying what kind of player we all assumed he was going to be. All right, we're about the midway point of year number three, and the record's maybe not the best, especially in comparison to last year, but five and four, we're still sitting at top. The AFC West. As long as you finish this one out strong, get double-digit wins, we're going to feel pretty optimistic about what we can achieve in the postseason. $37 million of available salary cap. We had to be smart with this. Um, well, obviously, Cold Miller needs to get paid first. He's the most important. He's our left tackle. He's actually not protecting the blind side anymore. But we get now you gotta get you know the special team aces. I wish you like is that like something that's hidden here? It's like the Raiders, we have really good special teams unit. Is that why we're winning like maybe a couple more games? Maybe ahead of schedule. It's like we just dominate special teams. So you know we'll keep the special teams unit here together. But we'll have to look for a new slot wide receiver and a new center, however. End of year three, I you know we rate the ship. We only lost one more game for the remainder of the year. 12 and 5, finishing up the AFC West. Actually, we went on a, quite a streak. We didn't lose again until week 18, and we'll just put in that under the umbrella of we were resting our starters. We couldn't improve our position, and we're now in the wildcard round against the Jacksonville Jaguars. To a third leading passer, we got... I mean, that's it for us, but I assume everyone else still had pretty good years. Third and fourth for Tua, so we're not at any risk of losing that next factor. And only five interceptions. That's very good. 26 rushing touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. Damn. Damn. Four thousand yard receivers. Devontae Adams goes off. Renfro, Mayer, and Jacoby Myers. All with thousand yard seasons. Diablo, Phillips, and Mori. So he was something that was actually a little bit interesting. Um, we had Phillips as our sub linebacker. And that was not obviously he's an edge rusher, but he's also a freak athlete. And he had a higher rating than Murray as that second linebacker. So I was like, oh, you know what? You know, I guess we paid money. Get him on the field. See if he can make some plays. I mean, ATFLs is pretty nice for a pass rusher. But we're like, we just put the best player on the field there. Max Crosby, 14 and a half sacks. 13 for Tyree Wilson. Six from Quincy Slay, the rookie. It's always tough to make a little bit of jump. But he is, as we saw early in the preseason, an X factor. So immediate return on investment. Definitely worth the price that we paid to trade up to get him on this team. No real dominant interception number player is what it is looking at the yearly awards mvp goes to lamar jackson two up back-to-back -back seasons as the runner-up always a bridesmaid and never a bride quincy slade does win defensive rookie of the year to his quarterback of the year i mean we're not really in a position that any of these players that we're talking about like they're all x factors so I, i'm not you know we're not relying on on these awards to get dev trade scenarios or anything like that so we're feeling pretty good here. Let's go to the wildcard game against the Jags. Here in year three, our team is a super team. And actually, we showed it right there. 42-14 to 14 with a chance. 
in a very, very bitter rivalry. We're going to the super team matchup. We get, of course, when we were going on a playoff run, there's, I, I feel like it's going to be every year. You're, we're, oh my God, Slay, the rookie, three sacks in his first playoff game. He is a big time performer. But I feel like every year, look, they were the fifth seed. They weren't even that good this year. But here we go, man. The battle of the super teams here in year three. They got us last year, and they kicked the shit out of us this year. 41-14. What happened? Get some James Draws reactions in chat. What happened? Uh, God, I love that guy, except when he's roasting the Eagles. Uh, Tua did not play particularly well. They stopped the run game. And, I mean, defensively, I mean, Slay's crushing it. But, I mean, I guess only two sacks. Did he get two picks, which is hard to do. But just the fact that, that game wasn't even remotely close. I, I'd hate to I'd hate to sound like a coward. But going into now, years four and five, we almost might need the role of not having to play the Chiefs if we expect to uh, make it out of the AFC alive here in the Super Bowl. To close out the season, you know, at least the Chiefs didn't win. The Bengals went on to do the thing. It's admirable. Like, they're a solid team. They're a team that doesn't get enough love, I think. Uh, you know, if you're in the argument of, like, the Chiefs playbook should be good because the Chiefs are really good, I, I do think the Bengals don't get that benefit of the doubt. I don't think the Bengals playbook's that good, and they're not nearly in the Super Bowl enough, in my opinion, for a roster that's constructed as such. Uh, but look at our squad here. No dev traits up or down for anyone on the offensive side of the ball, so that's pretty cool. Defensively, um... No dev traits up or down. Everyone's kind of just maintained the same pace. So that's, that's good. Let's go run it back here in year four. So going into this offseason, I need another wide receiver. Someone on the outside. Because right now, like Renfro, that's a slot guy. Uh, I need wide receiver. I need a guard. And I need a nickel corner. We don't have a lot of money. I could probably spend a little bit here. Like I looked at guard. I actually threw an offer on Zion Johnson. But I was like, you know what? We don't have a first round pick. We don't have a second round pick. But, like, if you if you could find a hit in the draft, usually it's, like, an interior line with a dev trade that we'd be able to plug and play in right guard. And I'm almost hoping the same kind of is, is for corner. Like, we can find, like, a slot corner. That's nice. If not, I mean, there's, there's a couple of, like, just solid guys down here a little bit that, uh, that you know, if, might still be available after free agency. Yada, yada, yada. End of the day, we haven't really signed many Raiders guys. And, uh, obviously, there was a certain Alabama speedster wide receiver that, just ruined his life and ruined other people's lives. And it's, it's a terrible story. But that stylistically, like, that's a Raider player right there. That's what I want to try to get here in Jameson Williams. Let's bring him. Let's get that wide receiver in the room. Let's get that pure deep threat for Tua. As I said, you can usually find guys outside of the first round for the interior. That's kind of what we did. We might need to trade up again. Uh, we got Calvin Walker's a second, third round projection. Three Bs and an A. Interested. Also a scheme fit. We have at center... Two A's and a B here. Chris McLean, he's day three, which I don't necessarily know if I'd have to trade up for there. Uh, another player that we showed a lot of interest in is, uh, look at this. Don't have a first round pick. Honestly, need a guard, right? Need a guard. We could kick uh, James Daniels in the center. Steven Sharp, third, fourth round, first, second round talent, double A, double B. We're going to make that happen. We found that time in the rough. We earned that player. So I want to trade up. I'm not, uh, looking at the third or fourth pick, I think, in the third round. Just straight up ask the Saints what they wanted. They want a future two and a five. Take that every day of the week. We'll have that first round pick next year. I don't even know. It's year five. Who gives a shit? Those picks don't mean anything. But we're going to be able to select the top guard that we have. He might even be one of the best guards in this entire draft class. So anytime you can find a player like that, especially in a position you need, you're feeling awesome. And you just cloud nine. Steven Sharp, welcome. What a pick. And just take a look at our draft recap. It's really a one-man draft class for the most part. Uh, we still ended up following my draft board and getting a couple nice little nice little value picks here. Jadavion Blackstock, awesome name. Power back, nice little RB2 there. Uh, we got Wakefield at tight end. George Wakefield, 75 hidden dev tight end. Only pinged him up because he was kind of fast. No, really, he's just like a well-rounded player. Really good catching. Uh, but that's just death behind uh, Michael Mayer. And the big pick here is Sharp. No first round pick, but he's going to be a day one starter for us. Now let's show off our 92 overall squad here going into year four. Just to give you guys an update. And even, hell, even Wakefield, the backup tight, he's going to start at fullback. Just because we felt a little, a little naked not having an elite player at almost every single position. Sharp, uh, we already used our coaching tree to unlock his dev trace. Just a start of, which, again, third round pick. 
great value. Day one starts. So we kick James Daniels back into center, which is, again, where he played in college. Our offensive line is good. I think you almost could say it's borderline great. The two most important spots at tackle are, are outstanding. Great one-do punch. You got Mayer there. James Williams comes over via free agency, so it just gives us a little bit more proven deep threat than Trey Tucker. So we're going to have Williams and Adams on the outside, Renfro in the slot. Another year of two up playing at a high level, I hope. Defensively, well, no real weaknesses. I, I, again, haven't, you can't, between the salary cap and no high draft pick, we couldn't just complete this roster. It's not like we have a true game changer at nose tackle, a true game changer at slot corner. But like, those are positions that like, you know, can you just stop the run? Can you let, you know, Wilson and Slay do their jobs? Yeah, he's good enough. We got a 77 slot corner. Is that good enough to be a slot corner? Yeah, you're going to be fine. But all said and done. Rest of this team, very, very good. Uh, turns a specialist here. Ready to rock and roll. And again, here, just showing you. Like, look, Phillips is getting a 75 as a sub linebacker. Sure, let's get freaky with the great athlete. Man, he was a five-star recruit for a reason. Great athlete. I think he can wear a lot of hats on the defense. And here in year four... That's, uh, you know, I'm going to set the goal. Lofty goal. I want to at least appear in the AFC Championship game. Either that or beat the Chiefs in the playoffs. One of the two. Midway point of view, number four. We are 6-1. and one, And, of course, our bitter divisional rival, the Chiefs, are 6-1. and one. We're coming off a nice victory over the Colts here in Week 7, in which Tua got player of the week. Wow, must have been a... I mean, he had a lot of yards, but two touchdowns. But, you know, we're taking... Actually, I wanna, let's see. I think he had it the first week as well. I just did a bunch of sims, but I'll be I'll be curious how many how many players of the week did two would get? You got one. Josh Jacobs got one for a four touchdown, 150 yard performance. Tua got it week three with five total touchdowns. Max Crosby also showed up there with five sacks. Our team's great. Week one, Tua and Diablo hitting that award. Like this is a, this is like a god mode rebuild. Uh, I'm very disappointed we don't have a Super Bowl yet, but that's gonna change here this year, especially with how the, fe the fellows are playing. Look at the final contracts here. See, that's also something that's been very... I don't want to I don't want to say it right now until we can get the guys back that we really need back. But, like, we haven't had too many issues with the contracts. You know, usually when your team's this good this early, years four and five, are they're tight. You're, you're stretching the budget a little bit thin. And it might... It might rear up his ugly head here. We have Devontae Adams. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I know we'll be able to get Max Crosby across the line, and with like how close we kind of are on the salary cap there, I think when we get the influx of salary cap at the end of the season, we'll be able to extend Michael Mayer. But uh, we're not—I don't think we're going to have any crazy year five Super Bowl or bust big signing that's going to put the team over the edge. But I'd rather this way. I'd rather keep the guys that have been here for a while helping build this thing. So we are going to for sure find a way to resign both Max Crosby and Michael Mayer for year five. And the end of year four, back on top, AFC West, 15 and two. Chiefs made the playoffs, so I mean, we're probably going to run into them at some point. Number one offense, number 20 defense. We have the number four rushing yards, so you can't run the football against us. Take a look at our stats to a incredible third yards, fifth in touchdowns, and those interceptions are staying down, down, down. Josh Jacobs, give this guy the MVP. He might. 59 yards, 30 touchdowns. He had 33 and almost 18. It's just insane, man. Absolutely. He's one of the... I, I, I think there actually is a claim that he's the best sim running back in Madden. You got Nick Chubb puts up big numbers. Derrick Henry puts up big numbers. Zeke has put up big numbers. I think pound for pound, like the GOAT Madden 23 running back is probably Josh Jacobs. Uh, anytime I've done a Raider sim, he's going off. Diablo and Phillips over 100 tackles. We got 16 and a half sacks. Matt Crosby, 16 for Tyree Wilson. Seven from Quincy Slay. Three picks, De Devon Diablo leading the team. Taking a look at the yearly awards. Give it to Josh Dick. What? 30 times. We can't buy an MVP. Third straight year two has been the runner-up. And Josh Dickens doesn't even make the MVP shortlist. That is incredibly disrespectful. He's Offensive Player of the Year. Probably ran away with that. Running back of the year. Man, that's a bummer. I was getting excited for a second that we'd have an MVP running back. Probably should be scaled that way. 30? You get 30? Our team, 97 offense, 93 defense in the first round of the playoffs. We get the Pittsburgh Steelers. We should, I mean, they're not, they're legit 88 overall. That's not bad for a sim team, but in an absolute shootout 
We handle business, and we don't have to play the Chiefs. This could be the role we've been looking for. 48-42. Definitely need our defense to play a little bit better, but look at that. Six touchdowns for Tua. Over 100 yards for Josh Jacobs. How do you stop this team? Josh Jacobs also had two receiving touchdowns. Good luck. This is our year. This is 100% out of all the years. Even though we still have one more year after this, this has got to be the year. We don't have to mess around with the Kansas City Chiefs. We can handle, if we can handle. This is a Lamar jackson list Baltimore Ravens. Who's your quarterback right now? Probably someone they drafted. Watch them have like Justin Herbert or something. That'd be annoying. Yeah, they drafted a guy, Derek Summers. Hey, you know what? He can kind of run the Lamar offense. Pretty good athlete. But um, this is our time. Time is now. I don't, we got one more year, but I feel like the pressure's on. They're like, this year, we don't have to play the Chiefs. Let's go make the Super Bowl. Go on a little sneaky Super Bowl run. And we handle business 24-3. Wasn't an outstanding offensive performance for my defense, which is the lesser of the two units. Did their job not giving up a single touchdown. And the Super Bowl is set. The 15-2 Vegas Raiders against the 12-5 Carolina Panthers. Number one offense against the number four uh, offense. They have a better defense, though. Number five overall defense there. Brian Burns and company. Look at that. 24 sacks. He's an absolute monster. We know that firsthand from our main Madden franchise this season. But uh, I think our offense is just another type of monster they haven't seen before. All righty. Super Bowl. Year four. Doesn't have to be a win. We'd love for it to be a win, though. We'd love to have that one in hand and see if we can win in two. I, I think for how good this team has been, it's almost like you need the staple of having two Super Bowl wins to truly define how dominant this team has been. And we're off to a good start, holding them to two field goals. We got two touchdowns. Three touchdowns to two field goals is always a good lead to be taken into the second half. Carolina does start the second half getting a touchdown, but it's been a kind of slow, grindy third. Open on the fourth. We need a touchdown here, which we get. Ten-point lead under two minutes to go. We have the football, and we absolutely are able to kill this game off. They give up a garbage time touchdown to make it look a little bit closer, but I'm not even going to go too, too much because I almost feel like one Super Bowl is below expectations for this team that we have built. We need multiple. We need back-to-back. -back. We need to finish this thing out as a little bit of a dynasty as we handle Lamar Jackson and the Carolina Panthers. But Tua, Jacobs, Devontae Adams, a defense led by Tyree Wilson from the 2023 draft class, able to get the job done. Let's see this trophy ceremony. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. And also, you know, we got to figure out Michael Mayer's contract going into this offseason. We get that done. We're going to be pretty much the exact same team, maybe even stronger, as Tua has a horrific number that we are now witnessing 21 for a quarterback. All right. He's making it his own. Let's go win another one to finish this thing out. All right, well, we got that influx of uh, additional salary cap that you get just for the league salary cap raising, which allowed us to re-sign Michael Mayer here to a to a nice contract. Now, Chris Smith is our only starter that I'd like to keep. We just financially can't, and he lost his superstar dev, so he's kind of on the downswing. I think we can find probably a role player that could start at safety for us here in year five, maybe a veteran on a shorter-term deal. We had to be frugal and free agency. The two spots that I want to add competition to, we obviously need a new starting free safety with Chris Smith hitting the open market. We're going to look at Jamie Robinson, part of that same rookie class, uh, has a star dev, only 26 years old out of Florida State, and I need a slot corner. Our current starting slot corner is a 75. So I'm um, looking at Roger McCreary. Got that dog in him out of Auburn, uh, 81 overall. So like both these guys, not necessarily X factors, but they're, they're really solid depth. Robinson's going to start for us. Probably, obviously, McCreary's also going to start for us. And just you know, alleviates a little of the pressure of us having to try and hit on a starter in this final draft class. The final first round pick of the rebuild. BPA was a safety. Just to add a little bit more competition there. We got Will Tomlinson, hidden dev out of Washington. Our final pick is a hit, all things considered. Did not have any early round pick. Getting the final pick of the first round, a 76 hidden dev. You'll take that every day of the week. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? X Factor? Let's look at our final Raiders squad. Tua, 95 X Factor. Josh Jacobs, 99. Devontae Adams. We got Jameson Williams and Renfro making up our school spots with Michael Mayer, who will hopefully and likely join the 99 club here by the end of the season. Worf, Sharp, Daniels, Muti, and Miller. So, you know, three, three out of our five are guys that are, you know, necessarily homegrown or we drafted them. 
obviously played a pity penny for worse but we did that obviously remember to correspond with the fact that the Chiefs side Nick Bosa and it has worked out pretty well as a neutralizer on the defensive side of the ball our front three are very good with Slay and Tyree Wilson both being x-factors I guess you know we've never really found an s-tier nose tackle but it's a nose tackle you have one job you do the ugly work don't need really a start at that position. We got Akuda, McCreary, and Nate Hobbs at corner. Morig, and just an absolute gift. Coming off a Super Bowl with the final pick in the draft, getting a hidden dev safety. He just, oh, he's an X Factor as well. Congratulations. I and mean, we're not even going to really utilize it, but it should help his base overall rating uh, surpass what is uh, 79, 70, or 80 with the boost there for Robinson. So I think, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where he's going to finish this rookie season out at we had Jalen Phillips Murray Diablo and Crosby as our linebacking core not a lot of weaknesses the fact that we also have the best special teams unit in the NFL as far as place kickers we're ready to rock and roll man win a second Super Bowl to finish this one out right and we finish out year five the right way another AFC West title 13 and four this team 99 this is this is you know obviously it's recency bias but I think this is probably the best team we've built in a minute i'm not gonna be bold enough to say this is the best rebuild and strongest team we built all year but it's gonna be right there it's in the conversation offense and defense elite like there's no weakness zero weakness on offense defense maybe not s tier you know we don't have you know three deep at corner our two linebackers are just a kind of role players our nose tackles a role player but don't get it to us this is a super team this is a team that answered the challenge if the Chiefs are going to be God mode, you got to maintain that pace. That's exactly what we did. We finished with the number two offense in the NFL, number 16 defense, a little far off the back. At least we were very stout against the run. Tua was the third leading passer in the league. I'm um, not really seeing anything else here. Let's look at the stats. And while we're here, we will look at the career stats of our players. Tua, 5,100 yards, 40 touchdowns, five picks. I mean, big thing for Tua is like, you know, he's not gone for 50 touchdowns, which is the high end of quarterback sim, but he's for sure as shit not turned the ball over. Every year, he's getting a lot of touchdowns, barely any receptions. That has been his game. 1,500 yards, 22 touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. He's the MVP of this rebuild. He's the MVP of every Raiders rebuild I or you complete here in this Madden 23 space. Uh, 1,400 yards, 12 tighties for Devontae, 11 and 9 for Michael Mayer, 11 and 9 for Jamison Williams. And on the defensive side, Diablo and Phillips both going over 800 tackles. We have 15 sacks, Tyree Wilson, 14 and a half, Quincy Slate, 12 from Max Cosby, and four picks from the newcomer, the new starting slot wide uh, corner, Roger McCreary, getting four interceptions. So I love seeing him being able to come in and integrate himself into the squad right away. And I believe this is the third straight year Tua has been runner up for the MVP. That's brutal. Give him one. Just give him one. What's so wrong with giving him one freaking award? One time. I can't use that in the title of the video. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. We didn't have kicker of the year. Let's get this going here. Get this playoff run here. Got Arsenal. Arsenal getting ready to play on Nottingham Force here on a lovely Saturday. So we start this run here against the Cincinnati Bengals. Our 99 offense. Huh. All right, let Fred have an ending. Classic Madden. Our 99 offense. I mean, you know, 27 points, I guess, is not brutal. But uh, it was a game that was dominated by... I don't even know. How did they beat us? Both quarterbacks played pretty mid. They had two interceptions. We had none. We ran the ball way better than they did. We had more sacks they didn't have a single sack they had how did we lose we had more rush yards okay well they threw the ball i guess they out yarded us doubled our first downs yeah, i guess you know I, I don't know that's that's a weird one man it's a really really weird huh well, I guess in closing, we can look at the good. We won a Super Bowl, and let's take a look at our five-year stats. I mean, honestly, we should count Tua. Tua's did a lot of that here with us. 35,000 yards passing, 264 tutties, 61 picks. But, I mean, since he joined us, what you know, what a decision. I was a little bit on the fence. Was this what we needed? You know, was Tua, or was he what we were missing? Actually, that was four straight years. 
Every year, runner up for the MVP. 40 and 5, 40 and 5, 40 and 5. 49 and 10. Tua was incredible. If you're looking for a quarterback and you're in the Raiders and Tua's available, explore that. Josh Jacobs, 12,000 yards rushing, 171 touchdowns. We got uh, 16,000. Obviously, Devontae did a lot of that without of us, but Devontae, legendary numbers. Renfro, 7,600 yards, 45 tutties. Michael Mayer, here the whole time, 5,400 yards, 38 touchdowns for him. He was amazing, pretty much baby Gronk. Diablo, 800-some tackles. We got 112 sacks on 105 TFLs for Max Crosby, 68 and a half sacks for Tyree Wilson, 27 and a half for Quincy Slay. And on the interceptions, Jeff Akuda with 20, 18 for Diablo, 13 for Morig, and 10 for Roger McCreary. And I guess for some of these players, um, you know, they're going to be making the career all-time list, I would say. I think probably for rushing yards, Josh Jacobs should be up here. Oh, he's just on the outside looking at one more year. And Josh Jacobs would make that top 10 rushing yards list. But you look like right there, all-time leader in rushing touchdowns. As it stands, Josh Jacobs. Incredible. Devontae Adams is up to third in total receiving yards. Fourth in total receiving touchdowns. Fifth for total catches, total receptions. That's probably all we're going to have there. But, I mean, you know what? At the end of the day, good rebuild. Good fun rebuild. Great way to start off a Saturday Thank you guys very much for rocking with me. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see next. I think the close runner-up right now for doing like a rebuild post-2023 draft was the Seattle Seahawks. Because obviously there you still have to figure out the quarterback spot. So if you don't want to see Seattle, or at least you want to see Seattle, you want to see someone else get on my short list. Right now I literally have the Seahawks. And then it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. That will do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Till then, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one. Go Arsenal.